there's a good reason why your uncle can lend to you for no interest and your bank does not want to do so. And that's fair. However, it is useful for a bank to understand that when I'm repaying my, my uncle, that represents that I am a, a responsible repayer of credit. For households, being able to go to a trusted friend or family member, being able to get a little bit of money on flexible terms, that's really powerful. The informal finance brief looks at saving behavior and borrowing behavior, all of which happens with friends and neighbors, none of which happens with formal banks uh, and other financial institutions. The big lesson of the informal finance study is that informal finance is big, that people are engaged in it actively. So the way this works is often that a group of people, whether they know each other through a mutual friend or through work, will each contribute a set amount of money on a regular period. And then over time, each of them has the opportunity to essentially withdraw that full pot. One of our survey households said, you know, he keeps on contributing to his savings group because he feels that you know, his friends, his coworkers, are counting on that money. The social element, together with the regularity and discipline, are really sort of key drivers. Banks can take advantage of those ideas. One of the most interesting questions is whether informal finance is a substitute for formal finance. It turns out that the, almost always that's not the case. The people who are borrowing from family and friends are also borrowing from a credit card or borrowing from a bank. People are saving with family and friends also have savings accounts. For the most part, they're really complementary activities. The formal financial sector pays relatively little attention to activity that they can't see. Part of what's valuable about looking at informal activity is that it provides a whole new set of information. Financial institutions are missing the possibility of finding and creating and building new customers by not taking informal activities into account. One of the real powers of work like the Financial Diaries is, al is it allows us to step outside of that lens of whether or not somebody's banked or underbanked or using better financial services or worse financial services or has access or doesn't. It allows us to step out of that framework and say, do people have what they need to make their financial lives work? And what would that look like?